Journalism with the Boys. Chapter three, save the dates. DD, that stands for Dakota Deliger. Let's go. All right. <clears throat> Where's Courtney? Dakota asked. Mr. Harlow and Jack were busy talking about something or the other at the teacher's desk, but Courtney was mysteriously absent. Hugo gave him an awkward side glance before turning towards him in his usual seat. His, uh, his grandma died. They were really close, so he's taking the week off. Oh, that's horrible, Dakota sympathized. I hope he's doing okay. Mr. Harlow added. Sucks. Is all that Jack said. After a few minutes, Mr. Harlow began the meeting. Now that they were a bit further into the year and more events were going on, they had their first large assignment to plan for. In November, there would be a whole big thing about the SCCC Foundation, an organization dedicated to helping students in need, somewhat like financial aid, but for other things, like gas money, paying for a certificate, were upholding an on-campus food pantry. It was the club's task to attend and take pictures and notes before writing an article about it. It was practice for bigger assignments. Then the rest of the meeting was put towards looking for more events to do some sort of journalism in that. Dakota Delagar, the Charlon Museum of History is holding an event where they are giving out an award for historic preservation around the Charlon area. It will be on October 14th at the Charlon Museum of History. We could pose a question to the representatives who accept the award and ask about their motivations, projects they had worked on, or what they plan to work on in the future. Hugo Vandier, a small horror movie themed event is being held at Joseph Martin's library on 1010. Two small time novelists will be there too, giving a great opportunity to interview them if they have the time. Aside from that, speak on, speaking on how the event represents or affects the community can also be a viable topic. Jack Daphne. Sunday after next, the 18th, there is a political rally taking place in Greater Charlin for Axel Wayne, who is running for local office. He's a real small-time guy, only just entering the scene, so we could probably get in a few words for his supporters. Parker Wessel will also be the speaker there. He was a mayor a few years back, so it'll be a huge deal. Okay, Mr. Harlow began, as they all finished sharing their suggestions. I want you guys to coordinate to attend these events. You won't have to do interviews at every one, but I think it would be better if you all attended each other's events together. Jack tried tr not to sigh audibly, but Dakota still saw him look a bit annoyed at the suggestion. We should exchange phone numbers, Dakota said. I can add Courtney to the group chat so he knows what's happening, Hugo added. I won't be able to be a part of the group chat, Dakota said. When the other two gave him funny looks, he withdrew his shitty old flip phone. Jack snorted. Get that from your grand? It's the best I've got, Dakota snapped, glaring at him. Jack just shrugged and shook his head. Whatever, man. Someone will text you updates, I guess. After everything was sorted, they went their separate ways. It wasn't long after Dakota arrived at home when his phone buzzed. He had already settled down in front of his second-hand laptop to work on homework, so he didn't pick up his phone right away. When it buzzed again a few minutes later, he finally checked to see who was pestering him. It's Jack. Courtney and Dakota said they can make it to the horror movie party thing. Can you? Is this Dakota's is number? This Dak yes. What time is it? 4.30 p.m. I'll be there. Okay. Dakota let his phone clatter down on the small kitchen table he was working at. He had hoped someone other than Jack would be the one messaging him. Maybe Hugo. He seemed the most sensible of the group so far. Whatever. It was a small sacrifice he'd have to make to be in this group he didn't really want to be in in the first place. And that's chapter three. All right. What are our thoughts on this chapter in general? Courtney, no! No! She oh. wasn't ready! She fucking died! 
We're three chapters in. You can't do this to me, dude. <laughs> the first death of journalism with the boys. Can't believe this. Oh man. Poor baby. I I find this chapter really, really interesting. Like yeah. exciting is is possibly the word because it sets up events for like the future chapters, so you know what they're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so it starts off quite slow. Uh, but then you get an idea of, you know, the sort of events that will be coming up. And, you know, I'm thinking, well, well, this will be interesting. We get to see, uh, we get to see about a, po a politician, Axel Wien. Yeah. It'd be very important to, uh, to, to his views and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, every, more uh, classic group stuff. It, uh, it really takes me back to just like being in its school and, one thing I wanted to mention in the previous chapters was how like realistic it feels, this sort of school setting, you know, like small details, like in the very first chapter, Dakota going to room 3B, you know, as opposed to going to the journalism room or <laughs> the something else room. It's yeah. room 3B, which I relate to very personally because it, in my secondary school, we had rooms that were all like coded numbers and it was quite stressful mm -hmm. trying to find rooms you'd never been to before yeah so you're like oh gosh oh gosh i don't want to be late so i could certainly relate to that um but yeah in this particular case we have them exchanging phone numbers which is is pretty standard for a group at least a good group yeah um i've been in some pretty uh pretty bad groups that uh <laughs> That they even bother with that, and then you're wondering how am I going to contact these people? My yeah. deadlines in like two days. Yeah. Ugh. Um. So um. I feel like uh one thing I noticed about Hugo is he's very thoughtful. Um. Yeah. You know, not only is he uh like really good at working uh as part of the journalism club, but just one line where he suggests that he adds Courtney to the group chat. You know, thinking of other people in that way, like, is, is you know, I think is very thoughtful of him. Usually a lot of people, since Courtney's not here, they probably, you know, wouldn't bother. And Courtney, it would be on Courtney to try and figure out and catch up. But, you know, you know, just showing a gesture like that of keeping people in the loop is not just really thoughtful, but I feel like it also a you know, relates to his character quite well because he's obviously, you know, interested in doing well within the journalism club and keeping all the group members up to date is a good way of en enabling people to work well in a group. Yeah, so, it's not just a journalism club, it's a journalism family. Wow. Well said. Well said. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right. Um, I like this chapter too. The... This set up my problem with having to check the calendar every other freaking page to be like, okay, what's the date? Is it October yet? Like, how many days do they have until the next thing? Because, just, I don't know, spoiling, whatever. We have, okay, we have one event, and then we have another event, and then there's like three chapters, and then there's another event that I'd planned out like in these first few chapters so it had to kept being like okay this happens on fucking Tuesday this happens on Wednesday and that way on like Sunday they can go do this shit and I'm like like you know keeping in track like uh, uh stuff like that yeah. I'll be honest um I would if there was an inconsistency I wouldn't notice it okay but other <laughs> so people might okay <laughs> what I will say is because I have read the uh, chapters in the future. Surprise, surprise. Surprise. Um, one thing I really like is how it does feel chronological because the way you set the story out, the the boys experience the boys. Thanksgiving, then they experience Christmas, then they experience New Year's, you know, and, and yeah. it's not, you know, it feels like you're progressing through that year with, with them. With, which whoa, I, I feel whoa. is the... New Year's doesn't happen until part two. Excuse you. That doesn't happen part in Journalism three. with the Boys. <laughs> what? what? Keep, keep I didn't going. hear that. Keep going. Anyways, um, to talk a little bit more of one of the things I like, one of my favorite moments 
this chapter was just that little sn- snip back from Dakota when Jack makes that comment about his shitty phone. Mm. It, it's quite unfortunate. And this is something I really re- relate to Dakota. I hate being put in a position where I have to admit that I'm poor in some way. Yeah. You know, so so when people are talking about, oh well, we should uh, we should add people to a group chat, you know, and I'm forced, you know, to make light of the fact that My I can't sucks. be part of a group chat because I'm too fucking poor to, yeah. ha- you know, have that sort of uh, <clears throat> function in my phone. It really sucks. It really sucks. But I feel like Dakota took it like a champ. I would be too embarrassed to even bring it up. Oh, no. um, but he would, he would just be like, he just straight up admits it, which is quite respectable. Wish that could be me. And uh, but, but you are Dakota. When, what are you talking about? We, he's Dakota's like the better version of me. The way <laughs> Don't say that. Dakota's also an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well. Sometimes that asshole comes in handy. See when Jack is being like an asshole. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 I, I, I really enjoy when Dakota just snaps back. And it also makes me excited for any more like emotional like moments in the story. Yeah. Because I like the idea of me practicing my angry voice <laughs> or, or, yes. or yelling into the microphone oh, as okay. we narrate it. If you yell, I'm going to cry just so you know. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Are those all your thoughts about this chapter? Yes. In general, okay. So, so what do you think about the characters this chapter? So, as we discussed, um, I, I I can see that Hugo is a lot more thoughtful. Um, I I could have initially been misled to the idea that Hugo only cared about himself and his work, wow. but that notion is definitely gone now. So it is, and he seems like quite a nice guy. Um, obviously, there, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for Dakota because, despite the fact that he's poor, he, I wouldn't so much say that he's proud of it. He's definitely not, but you know, he wasn't, he wasn't quick to shy away from the fact that, you know, he doesn't have the same capabilities as others. Yeah, he's just like. So I think that's very respectable. He's just like these are the facts, and I ain't gonna lie about it, bitch. It's just yeah. what's happening. Jack, on the other hand, still an asshole. Still an Nothing asshole. New there. Nothing new. Nothing new there. Nothing whatsoever. Unfortunately, nothing new from Mister Harlow either. Very very disappointed. <laughs> Just, you just gotta wait for it, bro. <laughs> I can't believe there's no character development in my f- in my favorite plot device. <laughs> oh, that's very sad. Uh, Courtney, <laughs> he wasn't really present, so he doesn't really get much yeah. aside from his grandma dying. Even though I, I feel like at least for the first half of the chapter, because the tone does shift quite quickly, um, Courtney is sort of like the elephant in the room because you are <laughs> wondering what what he's up to even though he's not there you can't help but wonder you know how imagine what courtney's going through and it does make me i wouldn't say excited maybe worried is the more better no. word no, courtney. Uh, about you know how we're going to see courtney when he does show up in future chapters yeah. assuming that's not the last time we see him of oh. course Oh, oh, maybe. (laughs) Um, It's awkward for me me to admit that I've read all the future chapters while the same breath pretends I don't know what's going on. (laughs) Okay, we're just... I I still kind of want to get... I have no idea, guys. I have no idea what kind of... But I still know you had that experience of reading it and being like, oh, what's going to happen next at one point? And I was hoping to sort of get that perspective in here as well, since, of course, I knew what the fuck was going to happen because I fucking wrote it, but, you know. Yeah, that's um, true. That's true. Uh, you, you do have some of my raw, raw uh, reactions emotions. to some of the <laughs> chapters, if you remember, when I was reading <laughs> them the first time. Oh, yeah. That's um, how you. That's how you know some of the chapters are good when I'm like screaming in your DMs. It's like, yeah, I think you got uh, Hugo pretty spot on with this chapter because he. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Hugo cares. He cares a whole lot, and he's very tender about it. 
um, opposed it. to opposed to some other people who care very mm. aggressively. But anyways, um, yeah, Hugo, big big tender teddy bear man. Jack, he's still an asshole. Dakota, poor, but he doesn't poor. give a shit. He's poor. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, his, that's his character. He's just poor. And Dak- Courtney. N- Courtney, no missing a grandparent. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I can't believe you. I can't believe you're giggling at that. You should be ashamed. <laughs> yeah, okay. you're, you're going to be voicing this character soon. And you, I sure will. How, how are you Wait, going how to do we manage? know that? How do we know he doesn't fucking die? Jeez, uh, that's spoiling the story for everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm not spoiling anything. You, right. you, you're. Maybe he does die. Yeah, maybe. Okay. (laughs) Any final thoughts on this chapter? Any final thoughts? I really, this is kind of difficult to be relevant since, you know, where, you know, people can only hear this, but (laughs) I really like the art on this chapter. It's very good. I, 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 my eyes, my eyes keep being drawn to the shading mistakes, like up here where there's just a line missing, <laughs> and then over here where I didn't erase it all the way. So that's all I've been looking oh at this whole time. God. <laughs> Why did you point that out? Right, no, I see it. No, you see that, it. That gap and like the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I can't believe uh, you do this to me. It's not that bad, honestly. All right, all right. The, like I said, I didn't notice at all until you mentioned it. So all right, thank Very you. Good. I do remember this. This illustration was kind of hard because there's like a lot of little details, like uh, the cross hatching in his tie or the the window or the freaking papers right there. But yeah, all yeah. right. That was chapter three of journalism with the boys. Thank you. I love you.